hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you're new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials this is a requested tutorial and in today's class i'll be showing you how to make a shot with a patch pocket using just an elastic band on the waist and these are the essential measurements we'll be working with the first measurement on this sheet is the waist circumference the next measurement is the hip circumference we also have the crotch depth measurement which is 12 inches the reason why the crotch depth is this long is because it's a high waist shirt and if you would like to learn how to measure or take the measurements of your clients when making a pants or a shirt i'll be dropping the link in the description box the next measurement is the tie circumference and the last measurement on this sheet is the full length of the shorts which is 18 inches so let's get started the first step is to fold the fabric into two to know the wideness of the fold you divide the tie circumference by two then you add extra two inches to an allowance to that The next step is to rule the starting line. So for this shot, we are not making use of a zipper. The only thing we want to work with is just an elastic band. So you need to make an elastic casing. To do this, you need to mark 2 inches below the starting line. So this is the elastic casing for the shot. Also take note that once the elastic casing is folded, this second line will be the exact waistline that is needed for these shirts. So this simply means that all the measurements taken vertically will start from this second line since that is the exact waistline. Now I placed my tape vertically on the waistline to mark the hip line which is 8 inches. The next line is the crotch depth line which is 12 inches and the next line is the full length of the shorts the full length of the shorts is 18 inches i added 2 inches so in allowance to that to make it 20 inches it's time to place the horizontal measurements on the paper i have the waist circumference to be 28 inches and the hip circumference to be 36 inches but because there will be an elastic on the overall waistline this simply means that I'll just be working with the hip circumference. Now I'll place the hip circumference divided by 4 on the waistline plus the sewing allowance of 1 inch by the side. Now on the hip line, I'll also place the hip circumference divided by 4 plus 1 inch sewing allowance by the side to connect it to the waist points as shown. So this simply means that the hip circumference was used on both the waistline and the hip line measurements. So on the crotch depth line, I'll be placing the tie circumference divided by 2. The tie circumference divided by 2 is 11.5 inches plus 1 inch sewing allowance by this side. Now to get the crotch curve, you need to extend this hip point vertically downwards so you can easily get a curve connecting both the tie circumference and the hip circumference points or you can also use a french curve on this m line which is the leg opening to know the wideness you'll be working with you have to divide the tie circumference by two without adding any extra allowance to this then you connect the points to the crotch depth line as shown the next step is to cut out the front piece of the shirt Now I will slit the folded side open so it gives us a two separate piece. Now to get the back piece, you should fold the fabric into two, then you place the front piece on the back piece as shown, making sure that you adjust the front piece a little downwards and also adjust it two inches away from the folded fabric on the side the next step is to mark two inches sewing allowance by the side of the shirt i 
All right, if you are familiar with our tutorials on how we've been cutting our pants trousers, you realize that the back piece is really two inches higher than the front piece. But in the case where you'll be using an elastic in the entire waist, you need to increase the center line of the back piece by one inch to connect it to this point as shown. The next step is to trim out the back piece. The next step is to slit the center fold of the back piece. So both the front piece and the back piece is ready and for those of us that might be like why didn't I add the sewing allowance to the other side but why did I add it to the center fold it's actually the same thing. So this method is best used when there is no curved shape on the side of the hip. Alright let's get started with the sewing. So this is the front piece of the shorts. I'll take this to the sewing machine to sew the crotch curve half an inch straight down to the waist. I'll also take the back piece of the same machine to sew the crotch curve half an inch down to the waist. So I've secured the center line of the front piece. And I've also secured the center line of the back piece. Before attaching the front piece of the shirt to the back piece of the shirt, you need to make the patch pocket. Now for the patch pocket, I folded the fabric into two. The wideness of the patch pocket is 9 inches and the length is also 9 inches so that is 9 inches by 9 inches. Now I'll place the tape horizontally to mark 3 inches on this point then I'll also place the tape vertically on this point to mark five inches to connect the two points together the next step is to trim out the pockets and since the fabric was folded into two before marking out the pocket you need to slit this side open so you have two pockets the easiest way to secure this pocket is to use a bias tape to secure just the curved side of the pocket as shown obviously the curved part of the pocket is secured and that will be the pocket opening all right the next step is to secure the side first of all i'll fold in the top part of the pocket by half inch then i'll fold the side in by half inch and I also fold the bottom of the pocket in by half inch using the pressing iron so it doesn't open after it has been pressed flat. And for this side of the pocket, it doesn't need to be folded because it will be inserted into the side seam. Now I'll also use my pressing iron to fold the edges of the other pockets as shown. So after pressing the sides of the pockets, the next step is to place the patch pocket on the front piece of the shirt. To place the patch pocket is very easy since we already marked 2 inches away from the waistline as the elastic casing. I'm just going to subtract that and add extra 2 inches making it 4 inches. This simply means that the pockets will begin from these 4 inches I marked and this side of the pocket will be placed directly on the side seam as shown making sure that the side seam is actually equal with the side of the pocket and the top of the pocket is directly on the 4 inches I marked. After this, I'm going to pin the edges of the pockets on the shirts as shown. After I pin the patch pockets, I'll take this to the sewing machine to secure the edges of the pockets following the direction of my finger. And I'll also place the second patch pockets on the other side of the shirts.
After pinning the second patch pocket, I'll take this to the sewing machine to secure the edges following the direction of my finger. The next step is to place the back piece on the front piece of the shirt to secure the sides of the shirts by one inch. So I've secured the side of the shirts and the next step is to secure the flap by sewing it one inch. Now I'll turn the shirt to the right side of the fabric. The next step is to fold the elastic casing. So remember that we used 2 inches for the elastic casing at the top of the waist. So now I'm just going to take this to my sewing machine to fold the top part in by 2 inches. And after sewing it by 2 inches, I'll also fold the edge of the fold, that's half inch in. And all together, the elastic casing is going to be 1.5 inches. Recall that I marked 2 inches elastic casing in the beginning of this tutorial. So this is the line and I'm going to use it as a guide in folding the top part of the shorts and I'll also fold the edges of the shorts in by half inch to secure the edges as shown. Alright, so we're almost getting to where these stitches will be closed. But before you get to that end, you have to make a little space in there of about half inch to which the elastic casing is going to be passed into. So you can see that it stops stitching half inch before the beginning of the first stitch. To create a little hole in which the elastic will be passed into. Recall that when I displayed the essential measurement, the waist circumference was included, but if you noticed, I didn't use the waist circumference measurement in making this shot at all, and this is where it is going to be used. So, the length of the elastic will be gotten by subtracting 6 inches from the exact waist measurement. The exact waist measurement is 28 inches. You subtract 6 inches from that and that will give you 22 inches. This simply means that the length of the elastic I'm inserting into the elastic casing is 22 inches long. Now I made sure that all the elastic was stretched into the elastic casing. Now I have the two ends here. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine to stitch it half inch away from the tip. After stitching the edges of the band together, I'll make sure I insert it into the elastic casing properly so that it doesn't show. Obviously, the fabric has covered the entire waistband, so I'm going to take this to my sewing machine to close this opening here, which is at the center front of the shirt. The final step is to secure the hem of the shirt. Alright, to make sure that both leg openings are equal, all you need to do is to fold the shirt this way. Now I'll fold the hem of the shirt 2 inches in, making sure that both leg openings are equal.
now i'll also use a pressing iron to press the hem together so it, it gives me a line that helps in guiding me when securing the hem of the shirt right guys this is the final outcome of the shirts i hope this tutorial was helpful you should give it a try and if you're new to my channel my name is nancy kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on your notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials thank you